Well, it looks as if Donald Trump will survive the impeachment trial in the U.S. Senate. And so is drawing to a close the latest incredibly intense and highly divisive chapter in the Trump presidency. But this hardly represents the end of the divisive politics we've been seeing for the past few years south of the border. To look at it all, the fallout, what the legacy will be of the impeachment trial, and what comes next, I'm joined from Washington by Bobby Allen. He's a reporter for National Public Radio. Thanks for joining us, Bobby Allen. Thanks for having me. Okay, first of all, um, I guess the big question is, in what s state will the acquittal of Donald Trump leave the American political scene, the body politic in America? So before this trial even started, acquittal was inevitable. The Republicans in the Senate have a strong majority. They always needed 20 Republicans to jump parties in order to convict and remove the president. Nobody ever thought that was going to happen. So this outcome is something that everyone has been expecting. What we do have now are a number of arguments made on the Senate floor by Trump's lawyers and by the House managers prosecuting Trump that will be politicized, that will be reoccurring in headlines, that will be injected into um, you know political campaigns as we head towards November 2020. Um, but you know Trump voters, so the base of Trump voters have never believed in this trial. It hasn't changed any minds. The polling here in the U.S. shows that, uh, you know, Trump's most ardent fans didn't like this trial before it started, and they don't like it now. And it really seems like, you know, there's a chance this could backfire on the Democrats. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, because going into this impeachment process, we heard a lot, even amongst the, for example, the Democratic presidential hopefuls, there was a lot of debate uh, among the Democrats about whether or not to go ahead with this impeachment trial, whether it would help or hurt them politically. What's, what's your hunch? What's your feeling? So that's, that's really hard to say. I think this is going to create a lot of fodder for Democrats in terms of really beating the drum about what they say was an abuse of power, what they say was Trump um, doing something, you know, that he has done many times before, according to Democrats, um, which has corrupt his office. So Democrats say there, there was absolutely no choice here. Our job as the, as the Congress is to, um, you know, exert our oversight role. We can't wait until November 2020. He has done something that is impeachable and we must remove him from office. That is what Democrats have always said. And now it appears as if he's going to be acquitted. Uh, Trump will be able to take a victory lap and say, I have complete exoneration. I did nothing wrong. They put me on trial. And guess what? It resulted in something that might sound familiar if you followed the Mueller report. Yeah. After the Mueller report came out, Trump said, I'm exonerated. I did nothing wrong. So this is really going to embolden Trump's base. And for Democrats, you know, they're going to have some talking points. They're going to be able to sort of emphasize more what they say is Trump's corruption. But I'm not convinced that it's going to give them the electoral momentum that they were hoping it would leading up to November 2020. And Republicans, obviously, the Republicans in Congress, they stuck with the president. They reject calling, uh, you know, additional witnesses. They voted down impeachment uh, trial. Um, so are you saying that they may have made the right political decision? Because, I mean, we saw midterms where Republicans were dropping uh, and Democrats were on the up. But are you saying that uh, public opinion may be that they will gain from this? Republicans will gain from this? Yeah, that's that's really hard to say. Um, you know, I'm hearing political strategists talk about how, you know, maybe this did ex exact some political damage on Trump, that those swing voters out there in the three Rust Belt states in the U.S., uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, that were so critical in the 2016 election, maybe some of those swing voters tuned in to the trial and had a really hard listen at some of the evidence that the House managers presented and thought, you know what, I don't think it's right for a president to ask a foreign government to dig up dirt on a political rival as a way to cheat in the upcoming election. That's Democrats, the heart of their allegation. Um, are those people on the voters who are on the fence now going to vote against Trump? That's so hard to say. But again, poll after poll is showing his base that is really fired up and is really, really devoted to this guy are just more fired up about him now. Um, so in terms of whether some swing voters are, are now going to vote against Trump and vote for the Democrats, we don't know, but polling does not underpin that theory, at least so far. So this is all about that few percentage points of people who are not convinced in one camp or another, 
and you're saying you don't, we don't really know, the, the jury's still out in terms of the influence. I mean, Donald Trump, uh, as you say, vilified the Democrats, uh, and he says, I've been, I will be found not guilty of high crimes, and these are just vindictive Democrats. Um, so you're saying, though, that the jury's still out? Yeah, the jury is still out. I mean, one, one thing that we really um, should pay attention to here is, you know, how often Trump is going to bring this up leading up to November. There's a big debate happening now in Washington among Democratic strategists as to whether they should bring it up at all. Um, there's one camp that says this is going to be a liability. It looks like we failed. We weren't able to bring witnesses. It looks like a sham process. It looks like a rigged process in which Trump was, Trump was always going to be acquitted. So let's sort of move on. There's another camp in Washington among Democratic strategists saying, no, no, no. Even though we had no witnesses in this trial, it was an opportunity to have 10 plus days of exhibiting to the American people what we see as pure corruption, as, as a president who um, is okay with enlisting a foreign government to tilt the election in his favor. And we need to emphasize that. We need to emphasize that he's this chaotic president, that he's this out of hand madman who is willing to bend the Constitution to his will, more interested in himself than the American people. Let's use the sound bites that we have now from the trial, try to get Democrats in the office, in, in office. But, but look, there is, it's an active debate now. We don't know yet how Democrats and whoever the nominee is will use this trial ahead of the election. I'd like to get your reflections, because as Canadians, as we watch this, we've seen this high drama, we've seen these incredible accusations, we've seen uh, accusations of high tr crimes, and we'll see an acquittal, uh, and Canadians are shaking their heads at the level of division where it seems, as you're describing, that a good part of the American population believes one thing and a good part of the American population believes another. Uh, how is this going to be now the trademark of American politics for years to come, that you have these two incredibly uh, entrenched camps? One thing that Democrats says this trial showed is that Republicans have an unshakable allegiance to the president. They said very early on that they're going to rise or fall with Donald Trump. Um, Democrats say the Republicans were never interested in being an accountability force of, of you know, the Congress is supposed to be a check on power. They coordinated hand in glove with the defendant in this trial, which was the president. Um, so Democrats say this process was never fair. It was never going to give him a fair shake. It was always going to be rigged against him. And I think, you know, Republicans deep down when you talk to them privately, some of them are mortified and are horrified by some of Trump's policy, some of his tweets, some of his personal attacks on his opponents. But they know that it would be political suicide to cross him. So as long as, as Trump remains their vehicle to get elected, they're going to stick with him and the country's going to remain quite divided. I'm going to ask you something, and maybe it's an unfair question, especially for someone who, you know, uh, is, 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 is watching this day to day. But how healthy is the American body politic these days? <sighs> it's a provocative question, and it's a hard one to answer. Um, you know, there's a lot of political scientists who are saying we're more divided than ever. Um, obviously, Fox News in the U.S. does provide a story every day that is different than what the rest of the media is covering. Um, I actually had an interesting interaction recently that I think will illustrate um, sort of what you're saying. I was outside of the U.S. Senate as the trial was going on, and there was a protester speaking to a counter protester, and they couldn't agree on a single thing. This counter protester was a Trump backer and the very basic facts that aren't even in dispute about this Ukraine scandal with Trump, the counter protester, the Trump supporter would not concede it. And that to me really, really highlights the problem here that Republicans and Democrats get different media. They consider different facts real. They are on completely different planets. I mean, the political landscape is, has been turned upside down. It's, it's, it's really, really remarkable, and I'm not sure how we're going to move beyond this, um, because there is just, everyone is, has so dug into their positions, and the Republicans are afraid to buck Trump. Just nobody has the spine to buck Trump, because they're afraid they're going to pay the consequences of that come voting time. Well, Bobby Allen, it's an interesting time, no doubt, for you to be there in Washington, and obviously, as the whole world watches, I want to thank you very much for spending the time explaining it to us. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.